Hi, Roman Diesel V here with the Great White North Report. Happy 2020. It was a great start to 2020 as Canada wins the gold of the World Juniors. Unfortunately, I didn't watch the game until it came out on YouTube, simply because I will not watch anything that, is, that sponsors Huawei. So I do not watch TSN or Sportsnet or anything like that. The minute I see a Huawei commercial, I shut it off. But congratulations to all the guys out there. They had a pretty tough start to the tournament, losing that game to Russia 6-0. But they bounced back in grand style and never looked back. Happy for those guys and wish them all the best in the future. So with that out of the way, now I'm going to look at 2019's biggest sellouts in Canada. And the biggest sellout has to go to Hockey Night in Canada and all the anchors on that show. Ron McLean, Nick Kiprios, Doug McLean, Lee Rudy. Look at them all, all sitting around discussing hockey while there's a Huawei sign in the background. And because of the because we arrested that stupid chick at the request of the U.S. government, because yes, we do have an extradition treaty with the United States, which means if there is a criminal or someone that Canada wants for trial in the United States, we can request to send them, no matter how, how big it is. And the United States, by treaty, has to do it. That's the difference. But no, we arrest this, this stupid chick from Huawei, Meng Wanzhou, at the request of the United States. China takes so, so much offense that they arrest two Canadians for absolutely nothing. And they've detained many more and then also put another guy in death row. Though he was dealing drugs and doesn't deserve death, but he definitely deserves his time in jail over there. And yet, still, Hockey Night in Canada, Sportsnet, and Rogers are going for the, the sponsorship money. They sold out. So for me, they're the biggest sellouts. I won't even watch hockey now. I'll follow it. CTV News. I'll, I'll catch the highlights there, open up the London Free Press, things like that. But I won't actually watch a game. Simply because they spawn. They have Huawei as a sponsor. CTV News. Meng's extradition hearing is about to start with Canada-China relations in the balance. China has threatened Canada numerous times and have already put applied pressure to us by arresting Canadians, stopping our imports of canola seed and even meat, pork products especially, until they were so starving for pork that they allowed it because they can't live with it. The Chinese can't live without it. So now we got to wait and see. And look at this chick. She's out there in the rain. Two guys from Canada are in China sitting in a jail, treating God knows how, as well as the others that have been arrested over there. So we have we have this chick sitting here looking pretty. She's got two multi-million dollar houses in Vancouver, and we got two guys in Canada in jail, and they can't even see their families. So first shame to Hockey Night in Canada and all the idiots that work there. Trudeau has been trying to trying to get the U.S. to secure the uh, the Canadians as part of a trade negotiations. Amazingly, China has not put a lot of pressure on the United States to release her because they're the ones who want her. But China is so does not want to threaten the United States. They'll threaten little countries like Canada, but they won't threaten the United States. If we cave in, it makes us look bad with the United States that we can't be trusted on our end of a, tri of a treaty. And the United States is a lot closer to us than China. And we are a lot closer linguistically, culturally, economically. So it doesn't make sense for us to let her go and send her off to China. Unless the United States says, yeah, you guys can let her go. But then again, the damage has already been done. Now, Chinese Foreign Ministry says Canada's moves amounts to ganging up on China. Well, because China did it itself. China overreacted, did a bunch of stupid things that they didn't have to do instead of letting the process work out. They should have realized that Canada was just caught in the middle, and they should have been pressuring the United States instead of pressuring Canada. But no, they have to go with the weakest part of it all. And because Canada politically is pretty weak, we don't have a lot of political credibility. We have a lot of sports credibility, but not a lot of political credibility, especially with Trudeau out there. For those who don't know, the Canadian detainees face prosecution on national security charges. Yeah, right. That is a lie. And they know it. Everyone knows it. So the question is, what can Canada do? What should we do to hit back at them? There are a lot of things we can do and a lot of things that will hurt the Chinese. But more importantly, let's start with something else. Beijing 2022 is coming around the corner. Two more years. I would say let's boycott the Olympics. I know it hurts our athletes. And I hate to see that because they work so hard to get there. 
But from a persp that perspective, I say no. The Canadian values are at risk here. And Canadian face, our face is at value. Every time a Canadian does something to, to help China, we lose face because we're giving in to them instead of helping our own people that are suffering over there. Not to mention the other, the Hong, the people in Hong Kong, the one million Uyghurs that are in concentration camps, Falun Gong, Christians who are also being prosecuted over there. So I'm all for boycotting the 2022 Winter Olympics. Which brings me to the next bunch of sellouts. Even though these guys know that China is, is not treating Canadians fairly in China, or anything for that matter. Oh, look at that. China hires Pierre Luders as their bobsled coach. He's over there coaching the Chinese bobsledders. Well, we got two Canadians sitting in a prison for nothing. So Pierre Luders, another sellout, took the money. And he did this back in July of 2018. So he was already there. He could have walked away. Said, hey, I don't like what you guys are doing. I'm going to walk away. You guys can find someone else to coach. Which brings me to the next one. Canadian curlers coaching Team China for the 2022 Beijing Olympics. Yeah, China is great at, at putting pressure on us politically. But when it comes to, hey, they want to win in sports, they'll go hire Canadian co Canadians to help them out. Even though they're arresting Canadians, it's just... It's mind-boggling how things work. So Canadians are losing faith just by simply, hey, we'll go to China and make some money. Help them out. Instead of saying, forget you, you guys have done this to our, our people, we're not going to go over there. So these people are, these curlers already sold out their principles. So Mike Harris, Dan Raphael, Carolyn Derbyshire, McGrark, and Perry Marshall are all coaching the Chinese this season. So they've sold out because this happened shortly after we arrested Meng Wanzhou. And when then same time period that those two Canadians were arrested. Let's reach to the next one. Again, Canadian coaches give instructions to Chinese skaters in Beijing. Brian Arthur, look at that. He looks pretty good with, in the, with the Chinese flag on his jersey. Tracy Wilson, that was May 24, 2019. Now those two are bigger sellouts than the curlers, because at least the curlers did in 2018, really before the shit hit the fan. But here we go, we got Orser coaching now. Took the money. Didn't care about fellow Canadians. He's probably one of those guys that Cherry was talking about who don't wear a poppy. I've lost all respect for Arthur. Sorry, Arthur, you're a sellout. Any Canadians out there, let me know what you guys think about boycotting the Beijing 2022 Winter Games. It's not my, it's not something I really want to do, but because of what's going on and China's being such an ass lately, pushing where they shouldn't be pushing. And I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say. Till next time, I'm out here. Come on.